Hey, uh, YouTubers, Taz Man here, bringing you another episode of Taz Teaches Java. Or Java, if you're uh, German. They don't pronounce the J. <laughs> that sounds kind of cool. Um, anyway, uh, in our last episode, we kind of talked about why Java. You know, we talked a little bit about uh, some of its pros and cons. We, we talked a little bit about uh, procedural programming and object-oriented programming, which is kind of an extension of that. In this episode, we're kind of going to use our Eclipse. So uh, what I wanted to do is actually, I don't remember in my previous uh, episode where, not not of this series, but that other episode that I, I keep referring to, that if you haven't already watched it, definitely go watch the one where I teach you how to install Java and Eclipse on your system. Uh, and then if you want even more, definitely go check out uh, the uh, Taz Teaches Programming Logic. It'll help a whole lot. But what we're going to do in this episode is we're going to actually start using Eclipse a little bit. So I wanted to, um, I don't remember if I actually walked through how to create a Java programming in Eclipse. Uh, so I wanted to start right at the very get-go of that. And then we're going to talk about the three things you, the three concepts or things of, uh, uh, <coughs> of object-oriented programming that you, you need to kind of understand. And that is encapsulation, polymorphism, and inheritance. Now, depending on how fast we go through this, we might, you know, make it through all three of them. We might only do encapsulation in this one and polymorphism because I'd like to try and get it down enough that you guys understand it. And I'd like to get your guys' feedback um, on it and stuff like that. So, <clears throat> let's go ahead and begin. First, before we get into that, what I want to do is set up a Java project. And, and so what you do is once your uh, Eclipse is up in the Package Explorer, if you just right click and go to New Java Project. Really easy, let me just bring that guy down so you can see it. And we'll just call this T, let's see, T4ZZTE, I uh, can't spell T E A C H E S. Taz teaches. We'll just do that. And then you can click next and you can just do all the defaults there and then just go ahead and click finish. Now, what this does is this sets up a basic, um, a basic project for you. So it has the reference library up here that it uses for the different classes that are pre built, and there's even others in the actual you know, the main Java, and then it creates this SRC file. The SRC file is where you're going to stick all your source. So if we want to, for example, let's just uh, create a new, let's do a new package, which is just a folder, but they call it package. Basically, if you want to think of it like uh, you would stick kind of like type of things in, in, a, in a single package. For example, like with Minecraft, your different entities like creatures and stuff like that would be in a package so that they're just kind of grouped together. We're going to call our package here, let's call it encapsulation, E-N-C-A-P, uh, E-N-C-A-P, S-U-L-A-T-I-O, whoops, I-O-N. So encapsulation, because that's kind of what we're going to focus on right here. And then we're going to go ahead and do new or we're going to do a class in here. And now one thing with classes uh, in Java is it's kind of the standard that you want to have it begin with an uppercase letter. You can get away with it being lowercase, but it's kind of the standard. So we'll just call this E-N-C-A-P, uh, S-U-L-A-T-I, oops, I-O-N. Did I spell all that right? E-N-C-A-P, S-U-L-A-T-I-O-N, yes. So what this is going to do is it's going to create a little job project and it's actually going to uh, create our first class. So as you can see here is the class encapsulation. So now let's talk just a little bit about encapsulation, what, what encapsulation does for us in programming, especially in, in, in relation to objects. So encapsulation is basically it's kind of like the hiding of data and methods within an object. Uh, it kind of provides security that keeps data and methods safe from inadvertent changes. 
So when we do encapsulation, when we use encapsulation in here, um, any classes that access this, they have main ways of accessing it that we call public, and that's through scope. Like this right here says it's public. So there's various types of scopes, and there's like the public, there's private, and there's protected. Um, and we'll talk about those a little later. <clears throat> so anyway, let's just uh, do some encapsulation stuff here. So, um, so uh, let's see. So if an object's methods are well written, the user is unaware of what's going on inside the class, right? So, like if, uh, for example, let's just say um, that. You, you use a computer, in fact you're probably watching using a computer or some kind of computing device to watch this video right now. You don't need to know all the ins and outs. You don't need to know how the data is being moved from a hard drive to the RAM to you know the memory to the, to the CPU and then up to the screen where it's output to you. You don't need to know all that. You just need to know how to, if you're at a computer, how to use the keyboard, how to turn on the computer, how to turn on the monitor, how to use a mouse, how to read the screen, right? You don't have to understand everything, the, you know, the nitty gritty of what's going on inside the computer itself. You just need to know the interface. And that's what encapsulation gives us. For example, um, uh, let's see, actually, let me check my notes real quick. Do, do, do. Uh, let's see here. All right, so that kind of gives you a quick idea of what encapsulation is. So if we, <clears throat> for example, we're going to have our encapsulation here. And let's just say, for example, we're going to have a private method. And <clears throat> we'll probably talk about these a little bit later. Private just means it's private to this class itself. P-R-I-V-D-E. And let's just call this um, private uh, string name, something like that, maybe. Okay, and then let's say let's do let's do it this way. Let's do f name. Oops, f name. We're gonna do camel case because that's kind of when you're doing variables, and we'll talk about those. Generally, you want a lowercase to begin with and then kind of camel case the rest of it. Each neck, each word after that has uppercase. All right, so let's do F name and maybe L name for last name. So P R A V H private, uh, S T R, oops, R I N G string, and do L name. All right, so right now, uh, these are private for one, so that means anything outside this class uh, cannot access these two guys. So if we, let's create another class down here. Let's call it uh, test, oh whoops, we want uppercase, test E-N-C-A-P-S-U-L-A-T-I-O-N. -S Did I spell it right? Man, I need my glasses, let me grab those real quick. Ooh, gotta reach past my microphone. Test encapsulation. Normally I don't wear glasses, but my eyes have been sore lately and kind of watering, so everything's a little tiny bit blurry. So there we go. Test encapsulation. We'll do that. So in here, uh, and anything <clears throat> that I'm typing that you don't understand, that's okay. We're going to go through it. Did not hit. There we go. So be the main. So this is another class. Now, right now, this class, test encapsulation, has absolutely no access to F name or L name because they're private. Now, if I made these public, I could access, well, let's just show you real quick. So let's say um, public. We'll make that one public so we can actually set it. And we're gonna get an error if we try and set the other. So first thing we need to do is we need to do encapsulate, whoops, not in E N encapsulation like that. Oops. E N and there we go. So let's 
So let's just call this my test and equals new. Like I said, you don't need to really understand what I'm typing yet. Like we will go over all this eventually. Encapsulation. Okay. So this is creating an object. We're creating an object of type encapsulation, which is this guy right here. And it's we're creating a new one. And this is going to be what will fire off what's called the constructor. And we'll go over that also. So now if I were to do <coughs> my test and do a dot, if I want to set, notice how right here, first of all, it doesn't even show L name. This has a little green dot near it, which means first name in encapsulation is public. I can actually set that. So if I said equals T4ZZ, right? And then if I tried doing the other one, which is private, my test, or what? Yeah, my test dot. If we forced it saying F name, or L name, not F name, <laughs> L name, and we try and set that equals M4MN, we're going to get an error on this one because. Um, actually, if we're going to get an error on both of them because this is a string and we didn't put it in quotes. Okay, so as you can see, this still has an error on it. And if we mouse over it, you can see that it says it's not visible. And that's because it's set to private. So only inside this class is able to see it. It's encapsulated in here. So what generally you want to do is set things that can actually access these. So for example, if we wanted to be able to set first name and last name, but we wanted to control it, because right now I could set this to anything. But if I wanted to control it, I could do what's called a setter and getter. So I could set up a public, a public and we'll, this is a function, so we're not gonna return anything. We're gonna say public, no return, and let's go set f name right and this is going to receive a string and let's just call it f name <clears throat> so this is going to give us away s t r i n g this is going to give us a way to set this thing in a way that we can control. So here we're just going to say this dot f name, which is private, but we can access it because we're inside this class, equals f name. All right? And there. So now if we ran this, or if we look at this, this one, it doesn't like that because that's a private field. It's invisible. It can't see it. But if I say, it like this and I say set F name like that and then I get rid of this because it's expecting me to send a string to it let me just go like this whoops oh my heavens I keep hitting the wrong keys <laughs> and then here we do this now it will be happy with us because we're using a public thing we're using this public function that will receive what we type in and it will set it. So if we were to try and compile this program, one, we'd get an error because um, as you can see, it says there's an error and that's because L name is hidden. But if we actually went like this and then when we got done, we wanted to see what, actually we don't have anything to get it. Let's go ahead and also set something to get the first name. So let's do this, control, whoops, control Z, control C, not Z, and V. So this is going to be forgetting the first name. It doesn't need anything to be passed to it. And all it's going to do is return first name. R-A-T-U-R-N, oh, L, yeah, F name. We don't care about the other one right now. Why do we got an error? Oh, it's because we're getting a void. We need to return a string. 
Okay, so now if we actually saved and ran this, did we comment that out? Yes. So if we ran this, oh, we're not going to see anything because we didn't set it yet. <laughs> it's just going to run and we're not going to see anything. But if we wanted to see what it did, we could say my test, whoops, my test, uh, and then say get, not get class, get uh, f, f name. And then that's it. <clears throat> Although, let's go ahead and just put that in a print statement. Uh, F of T. And then delete that and that. And do that. Okay, so what this is going to do is this is accessing another class uh, called println, which is the function inside the class out. Uh, and we'll talk about all this. Like I said, this might be confusing understanding what's going on here, but that's okay. But as you can see here, we're setting it to TAS and we're able to get TAS. And the reason for that is because even though this is encapsulated where you can't access these directly, we can access them through public things that we set up. So in a class, I think we might have went a little bit over this. Inside your class, you have things called yeah, I think we did go over this. We have our variables, which are our, our um, what did I call them? Our properties. And then we have our functions, which are our, our methods or our functions. And a property is kind of like a noun, a person, place, or thing. And then the methods are kind of like a verb, get, right? We're getting something, we're setting something, we're doing something. So, <clears throat> let's see. So that kind of gives you a real quick idea of encapsulation. I can run this program. I don't need to know what this thing's doing. In fact, let's even make one more um, that might do something a little more complex. So let's first uh, create, create a setter and getter for our last name as well. And I'm going to show you a quick way in Java, in Eclipse, there's a quick way of doing this where you can just go up here to source and go down to generate getters and setters. And then we already have our first name one, so we don't need those. We have last name that we want to get. We do want both. Uh, we could actually be fine with just the set, but we're going to do both. So if we just wanted set, we could do that one. If we want get, we do that one. And you'll see it actually adds those automatically in here. Now they're in the opposite order of what I was doing, but that's irrelevant, doesn't matter. So now we have something where we can set and get the last and first name. So now if we fix this guy, like we have here, and now we'll see that we can actually see the, so let's do S-E-T and that. So you can see we have the ability to set last name now. And do that, and do that. Now we're actually setting the first and last name, whoops, and that. Here we're just getting. But we're gonna create a new one in here that we're gonna call get full name, right? So it's not just getting and setting. This is actually gonna take the combination of both names. And I think this will kind of, ex this will kind of uh, go off of, you know, that with a computer, you don't have to know everything it's doing on the inside. You just need to know how to tell it to do what you want it to do. So if we say P-U-B-L-I public, and this is going to return a string, right? And we'll call this get full name. And we don't need to pass it anything, so nothing goes in there. And then we're gonna do this saying uh, return Oops, rerun, return, or return, <laughs> whatever, return, and we're going to say F for first name, and we're going to concatenate it with L, last name. So as you can see here, I mean, we can understand that, okay, we can set and get the first and last name, uh, but we didn't have something where we had to say here where we're setting both a first name and a last name together. We're setting them individually here, but there's nothing that says, you know, 
So if we wanted to uh, show this now, we could go S out, which is a shortcut. And by the way, when I hit control and space is when it will automatically uh, type that out for me. So if we do my, or whoops, uh, we want to do get, or no, we want to do my test because we want to access that object. My test and parenthesis, or not parenthesis, dot get, and you'll see here we have full name. So we can do that. We don't have to put anything in it. But now when we run the program, we just need to know that we want it. There's a function in there or a method in there to get the full name. And we don't care what it does or what it does on the inside. We just need to know that it can do it. So now if we hit run or save first, save all, and then run, you'll see first it says Taz because we outputted that here. Whoops. Probably should have. Let's see. Where is the code one? This is you. Console. So we have Taz. Maybe we should uh, move this down here. Boop, boop, boop. Like this. Well, so we can see just a little better and leave it up. So as you can see, the first thing it did, it printed out Taz. The second time, it ran the get full name, which did Taz and man. Now, for example, we want to do some fancy stuff with that, like put in a comma or do last name, plus, last name, comma, first name kind of thing. We could actually do that by appending in some space here with a comma and a space, and then maybe sticking in F name here. So if we run this, you'll see it'll actually say man, comma, space, Taz. So once again, the user of this program doesn't need to know the nitty gritty. If I'm writing a program that is guess my number or something along those lines, I don't need to know how the computer comes up with the number or what, how it measures m the number I guess to the number it's, it's, uh, its secret number is. I just need to know how to give it the number I want to give it. So hopefully that kind of helps you understand encapsulation. If not, feel free to leave some comments down below. Let me know, okay, I wasn't really clear on this. Like I said, don't worry about the syntax right now. I just want you to understand the concepts. Uh, we could have done this in Photoshop, but I think it's a little better to just kind of get an idea of what the coding is looking like as we're doing it. So this is encapsulation kind of in a nutshell. Um, hopefully you did understand it hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did uh, you know be sure to leave a thumbs out thumbs up down below aside from that comment like and subscribe follow me on Twitter check out my discord and other channels um, and that's it uh, don't be afraid to ask questions <laughs> until next time I'll be seeing you later bye